and welcome to the GAP, the Get Attitude Podcast, The Gap, bridging the gap from where you are to where you want to go and from who you are to who you want to become. Hello, my name is Glenn Bill, founder of the University of Attitude, keynote speaker and author of the ABCs of Attitude, and I've been able to help tens of thousands of people get attitude. Attitude, the secret formula to success in your business and in your life, and this podcast will help you get yours. So let's get some. I want to welcome everybody for this extraordinary guest. This is a guest that most everybody wants on their podcast, but you can't get him because he's in too much demand. But I can also tell you that this gentleman is not only a mentor to me and a good friend, he is also somebody that actually started the Get Attitude podcast with me. I went there and he said, hey, Glenn, you need a podcast and I'm going to show you how to do it. So even though we're on booster number seven, we're seven months into this, this was actually recorded in Jeffrey Gittimer's studio. So uh, it may look a little different. I may not be as good, but you know what? Uh, The guest, there's just nobody better. I hope you sit back and enjoy this legend, this sales icon, this nine-time New York Times bestselling author. I think he sold over five million books. Uh, Guys, gals. Grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and enjoy the great Jeffrey Gittimer. Today we're here with the self-proclaimed king of sales, my personal mentor, author of 15 New York Times best-selling books, including the number one best-selling book on sales on the planet, The Little Red Book of Selling. If you don't know who I'm talking about, you must be dead. But let me tell you, this guy... His name is Jeffrey Gittimer. Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Thank you, Glenn. If you're dead, uh, you can turn off your headphones. Because <laughs> right. you won't know. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, this uh, month is Global Attitude Awareness Month. I didn't know that. And we are kicking off our podcast that you helped me build, actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just want to uh, thank you for the uh, couple of days we've spent doing this. Pleasure. And uh, what we're going to do on this podcast Uh, at least for our first season, is focus on what we call the 10 Attitude Boosters. And you have chosen to uh, make this month, because you're my special guest and my mentor, you wanted to take the Attitude Booster called Grow or Die. Ooh. How about that? I love that. Heavy. Well, you know, your podcast is Sell or Die. I'm aware of that. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) And you you and a million other downloaders. Exactly. Right? Right. So um, what we wanted to do was uh, bring you in today and talk about sell or die, of course, but we want to really talk to you about grow or die. And if it's okay, I'd like to proceed and you you know, know. interview and ask yeah. you a few questions. Yeah, you can ask away. I'm fine. Very good. What I'd like to know is uh, can you recollect a time when you said, boy, I need to grow through this? I can remember 25 times where I needed to grow through this, but let, you can get personal like when my mom died or my dad died, do you have to you have to grow through that. When you fail at business, you have to grow through that. When your car gets repossessed, you have to grow through that. <laughs> so there's all kinds of things that happen in your life that you need to grow through, or maybe you have a personal illness of some kind, or a family, you know, close loved one has a personal illness of some kind. Those are things to grow through. But there's also the positive side of that that when your business starts to flourish and you only have five people but you need 10, you need to grow through that. So don't look at grow through something as though it's like a, an obstacle or a brick wall. Rather, it's a you know cornfield or ivy or- Well, it's a big opportunity. Oh, hell yeah. It's, listen, it's, it's an opportunity when anything happens. You know, when my, when my father died, rest his soul, I wrote an article about him. Like I said goodbye to my dad today. No, no, not goodbye. It's like the final goodbye. And I'm writing it on the airplane. I'm crying my eyes out. And the flight attendant comes, you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. (laughs) But I published it in the business journal and I have hundreds, hundreds of letters from people that start out, you don't know me, but. Cool. Like cards and letters and stuff. I have them all memorialized and I kept every single one of them. Because some of it was my dad died too, and I had to get through this too, and I had to, and people will talk about their situation, 
or they want to thank me for all the articles that I've written and, you know, they've been a fan, but a silent one, but they wanted to reach out and say, you know, I'm sorry, that kind of thing. So you never know what the opportunities are when you talk about what your obstacles are. Sure. And so when we talk about growth, and and I think it's 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 evident, there's growth in business challenges, mm-hmm. there's growth in personal life challenges. And uh, as this being a personal development podcast, when we when we talk about the death of a of a family member, especially mm-hmm. a father or a child, what what sources did you use, or or what gave you the uh, education, or what tool did you use to I went grow back, through that? My dad and my mom, I did the same thing. I went back in their life, and the togetherness of it, theirs and mine, and I wrote down every cool thing I could think of. Every funny thing, every story, every everything. And then I talked about their personal um, – their, I guess, I guess you could call it their personal expertise or the, what, they, what they specialized in. Like my dad was a salesman. My mom was a cook. Yeah. But ended up being a business person. So I looked for, uh, for all the good in that, and I wrote everything down. And you know when a friend of mine has the same thing happen? Yes. I, get, I tell him that. I, I send them the articles that I wrote about my dad and mom, and I say, do this. It's, it'll help you heal. And I think um, that transfers immediately over to business. Like the people that are listening to this, that are trying to get attitude, mm-hmm. right, that are trying to change their perspective, alter their focus, why not just write down everything that's great? You got a business that's failing. Your sales are off. I didn't meet the quota. My sales manager's a dick. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Now, raise your hand if you're a sales manager. <laughs> right. That could be you. Right. And so maybe instead of focusing on why you hate your sales manager and how he demotivates you, right. find the good in him, educate him, lift him up, and create the attitude that you want in him. And meanwhile, you might want to put your resume on monster.com under an assumed name just in case. There's no question about that. Some people just need to be successful someplace else. Let me ask you this. When you, when you think about growth, what does growth mean to you? Well, the first thing that I think about is when I was a sophomore in high school, I was five foot two inches tall. <laughs> and literally a year later, I was six feet tall. Wow. My bones hurt. I bet. So that's the first growth that you think about, you know, just in terms of that. But let's go back to my dad for just a second. When I started to receive all these letters from people, I recognized that my responsibility as a writer was significant. And so I, I challenged myself to get to become a better writer and grew that day as well, or grew that month actually as long as I received things. Sure. So you have to look at it from the perspective of what are you looking to grow? If you're, if you're listening to this podcast, ask yourself, what are you willing to grow to? Right. And how much of a risk are you willing to, to take? In order to make that happen, because some people are risk averse and they won't change their job because they're safe or whatever. And some people are risk averse because they won't ask for the sale because they don't want to get rejected. It's all in it's all in your in your mind. I was going to say your balls, but I don't don't know. (laughs) We can do it. We're ready to eat. (laughs) Okay, But but I think, you know, Jeffrey, what you just said is is the whole reason that somebody needs to listen to this podcast it's I need to create an awareness of where I am. I need to be aware of my surroundings. And then I need to create a vision. And I need to understand where I want to grow go to yeah. and who I want to become, Right. which is what you experience. So when we talk about this thing called growth, do you believe growth is an attitude or is it a skill? I believe that it starts as an attitude and ends up as a skill. Because if you don't have, if you're looking to become better at sales, you're looking to become a manager or CEO, the first thing you have to do is study it. Because if you don't study it, you're not going to do very well at it. I would like to have a quarter for every good sales guy that they made a manager and he failed. There's tons of them because they don't give you a management course or a leadership course. So I'm looking at it from the perspective of if you're going to, if I want to grow someplace, the first thing I'm going to do is study everything about it. Sure. And then I'm going to take the risk. Right. Knowledge is power. And, uh, you know, the seven skills of sales. Number one, product knowledge. And listen, baby, if you want to sell yourself, you better get to know yourself personally. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So it's personal product knowledge. Personal product knowledge, or what we call personal development, right? Yeah. So it's funny when I when I talk uh, to our audiences and I say attitude booster, grow or die. A guy raised his hand. He said, "Are those the only two options?" <laughs> uh, well, no. There's mediocrity. Sure. So you can, if you choose not to grow, then you pretty much stick where you are, and you have the same amount of income on a pretty much an annual basis. And maybe you make a few commission dollars, but the bottom line is you're not going to ever get to where you really want to grow. Well, and when we look at your podcast, which is ungodly successful and can't even tell you how many people are signing in to listen to mm -hmm. you, die is in your podcast, sell or die. Right. And you talk a lot about selling. And, you know, nobody wants to talk about dying or death, but because we have an attitude of openness, uh, we're going to talk about death. Okay. And I'd love to know wh what's your definition of death or what is your context of death? I'm guessing nobody's ever really asked you this before. That is correct, but I'd be more than happy to tell you. I didn't really have a firm belief a belief about death until I – like what happens afterwards? Do you turn yeah. into a pumpkin? Do you come back as a cow? What happens? Maybe a gnat. You know, <laughs> a dung beetle if you're yeah. a Hindu. Uh, but here's the deal. I read a book called Many Lives, Many Masters by a psychiatrist named uh, Bernard Weiss. And he talks about he, he had this woman that he couldn't figure out what her problem was. So he tried. He was against it, but he tried hypnosis. And this woman talked about all of her past lives and how interconnected some of the people were. And I'll tell you, I bought 50 copies of the book, wow. sent them to people that I knew, and told them, I don't know if it's true or not, but I sure hope it is. Right. And cause I'm, I'm coming back as a, you know, something else connected somehow with the people that I knew. Yeah, and I think um, I always imagine when new life comes into our family, I wonder, you know, is that great grandpa? You're right. Coming back or great grandma? I can also tell you this. On the day that my dad died, we we're all going to come to the funeral. But my daughter Stacy, in her eighth month of pregnancy, went into labor. Oh my. Wow. So Stacy and her sister Erica, twin sister Erica, went to the hospital to have the baby, and Rebecca stayed with me. And in a in a you give the I, I gave the eulogy for my dad and then you drive to the to the cemetery and with Jews they have a ceremony at the gravesite and you take a handful of dirt and throw it in. My pager, just to let you know how long ago it was, <laughs> I take my handful of dirt and I throw it in, and the second that I threw it in, my pager goes off and says, It's a girl. Oh my mercy. Cool. So I'm, and this, by the way, was April fifteenth. So it's birth, death, taxes Unbelievable. On, the, on the same day, and it just it gave me faith that, uh, yep, Julia's dad. There's no doubt about it. So I'm a big karma guy. I'm a big things are crazy, and when you just said it, you left out one very important day on April fifteenth. It is Global <laughs> Attitude Awareness Month. Cool. But April 15th, isn't that Tax day. weird that yeah. it would come up? April 15th is Global Attitude Awareness Day. It's cool. the day that we celebrate attitude throughout the world. So we, uh, your father must be blessing us or yeah, something. He's doing That's something, wild yeah. that you yeah. would just say that. That is just crazy. So it's a girl, and what was her name? Julia. Fa and then how many grandkids do you have? Four. And how are their attitudes? They're wonderful. They are pretty wonderful, actually. <laughs> Why do you think people fear death, fear talking about death? And do you, do you think that death and fear are the same thing? Nah. Uh, fear could be walking into a closet, uh, losing a sale, going broke, not being able to make your payments. Um, but death is a sort of final. Yeah, and we don't know really. We don't. We have faith, but we don't know what's going to happen afterwards. I, I know you're not going to. Be <laughs> I envision something cool, like you die, you have the funeral, and then people walk out, and you're there thanking them. Thanks for coming to my funeral. I really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks. You you can't do that. Right, right. Um, so you want it to be something memorable. You want it to be something that they go home and, um, 
feel good about themselves. You know, that's why they have wakes instead of funerals. Sure. In some places of the world. And, and you know, with death comes this thing called legacy. And yep. I, don't, I didn't want to get morbid in here, but for God's sakes, it was grow or die. And I think we have to understand and think about if you're going to sell, you're going to die, or if you're going to grow, you're going to die. But the, the, the real question for the people sitting in their cars or listening to us is what do I want my legacy to be? Mm -hmm. So there's a vision in the earthly life, but your legacy is what really hits you when you leave this earth. It's what you want your kids to say about you at your funeral. Yeah. What do you, you know, my dad watched a hell of a lot of TV and he's drank he's, a six pack every night. He's an right. all American drinker. Right. So you can't uh, think about what you're doing and think about the legacy that you're passing on. Um, in my leadership book, I talk about leaving a leadership legacy. Mm -hmm. And I talk about um, Glenn Warner, a tough guard at Cornell in 1912. Yeah. And he was invited with a bunch of other coaches to a meeting in Philadelphia to form a kids league for football players, little kids. Glenn had already been, he'd won a national championship at Pittsburgh. He coached Jim Thorpe, among other athletes. Pretty good athlete. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they invited seven coaches, and only one of them showed up. Wow. Pop Warner. Mm. And that's how that football league started. And think about the legacy of that, because he would have gone down as one of the greatest coaches of all time. But now, about 400,000 kids a year play Pop Warner football. Yeah. And that is something that you – that's a legacy. That is exponential. Oh, yeah. And, and so you look at it from that perspective. You, you can look at the legacy of other coaches, um, Newt Rockney or Bobby Knight or mm -hmm. you know people that have made a mark in the, in the world, Doug Peterson, yeah. for example. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but that's Philip Eagles for those of you not paying attention. <laughs> um, the, the challenge that you have in your life is what do you want your kids to say at your funeral yes. or your spouse? And that's that's the legacy. And that's, to me, that's what you work for. Right. You work for money, but it's only money. Well, one way to create a legacy is this uh, awesome uh, podcast you do called the Sell or Die Podcast. Yes. And the other legacy that you are creating is the Sell or Die Podcast Network. Correct. Where you help guys like me start our podcast, develop our legacies under your legacy. Yeah, once you record it, it's pretty much there now forever. Yeah, it is. Um, it might not have been in the, the 40s or 50s. It started to be in the 60s and 70s. But now with the internet, everything is so out there yeah. that you can Google just about anything and come up with a dozen resources or 50,000 resources in one second. So tell me, I'd like to know how you named your podcast, the Sell or Die podcast. What was the like, what did you think about or, or what was the uh, switch where you said, ah, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. Um, I don't think that there is a – there's no second place in sales. You don't get a ribbon uh, <laughs> or a little trophy for participating. First runner up. It, you either sell or you have fucking nothing. Right. And so I'm, I look at it from the perspective of how do you convey that to somebody – um, you know, there's a second place prize in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a second place prize in, in many things, second or third place prize in horse racing or whatever. They get paid for it. But in the end, ask the person who came in second, would they have rather come in first? Yeah. And they'll always say yeah. Right. Okay. So I draw the analogy in my seminars that Michael Phelps in the Australian Olympics, um, he won eight gold medals. Mm -hmm. He won the seventh gold medal by one one hundredth of a second. Yeah. Who did he beat? I have no idea. Exactly. No one will ever care who he beat. But the guy, it was a one one hundredth of a second. Yes. And in, in that makes all the difference between being remembered or not. And it's all in the preparation. The uh, I always like to say to our salespeople, hey, you, you eat what you kill. And uh, the commission salesperson, uh, undervalued, underappreciated, but some of my favorite people in America. And, and those are the people that I think are listening to yeah. this podcast. And you should interview them. Yeah, and, and we're going to. So if you guys know somebody that would fit in well with the Get Attitude podcast, somebody mm -hmm. that uh, squeezes the juice out of life, somebody that can help people get from 
where they are to who they want to become. That's willing to eat that possum. It's willing to eat that possum, <laughs> right, to make it happen. We're going to go ahead and wrap up this podcast. We have a fun thing that we like to do with our guests called the Decade Advice Challenge. And cool. so what I want you to do, Jeffrey, is go back in your mind to when you were uh, these certain ages. And if you can, in a word or a sentence, tell us the best advice you would give the world from when you were 10. And, and what it really means is you're going to remanufacture maybe the greatest lesson. Yeah. So what I want you to do, uh, which you have no recollection of, is uh, <laughs> oh as, as a baby, give me your best advice as a baby coming right out of the womb. Well, uh, the best advice I can have is have hair. Have hair. Yeah, that's good. That's a. How about when you were ten years old? Best advice: Have everybody go to summer camp for eight weeks. Awesome. Be away from your parents. Learn how to fight for yourself and learn how to play on a team. Excellent. Yeah, that's good. How about twenty years old? Twenty years old. Uh, don't do drugs, unless they're really good quality. <laughs> <laughs> um, think about who you want to become rather than what you want to do this weekend. Yeah, love Big it. difference. That's great. Yeah. Uh, 30 years. And drop out of college. There you go. 30, yeah. 30 years. 30-year 30 advice. You have to measure where you are at this moment in time at 30. I was selling cold calling in New York City, and um, I had my own companies. And it was, a, it was a struggle because my marriage was not the greatest, and that was probably my fault as much as anything else. But you... You get caught up in life, yeah, and you you try to struggle through the moment rather than taking a longer view. And had I taken a longer view, it might have been a different outcome. Awesome, and uh, look at Jeffrey uh, has some years on him. God love him. So oh. we're going to keep playing this game. Forty, oh forty. Give me your best advice at forty. Uh, be very careful who you establish long term relationships with because they could crumble. Awesome, and when they do, they cost a lot of money. <laughs> And it's not just a matter of the money that it costs you. It's the momentum and the circumstances that, that happens uh, as a result of it. I, I believe in something called emotional expense. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm in the sale, I talk to people. They go, it costs too much, whatever. I said, yeah, but here's the thing. What, what is the emotional expense you're going through? Right. Either making this it's harder to go through the emotional expense than the dollar expense. No question. Times 10. Right. Uh, I think we're up to 50. Okay. At 50, I would say if you, you collect your life's experiences and then you write about them. Awesome. You wake up in the morning, you read, you write, you prepare, you think, you create. Emphasis on writing because writing leads to wealth. Not money, wealth. You capture all of your good things and then from 50 to 60 to 70, you keep on writing. Yes. You write every day. It's not like, well, I'm 50 now, I should write. No, you write every friggin' day. <laughs> Uh, every day, and you know, like I have, I have fifteen books so far, only because I write every day. I don't sit down and write a book. I just sit down and write. Yeah, and that turns into a book after a period of time. Great advice for our fifty-year-old listeners. Yeah. Sixty. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> um, I, I had the experience in the in in that period of time where the economy was tanking. Yeah. But my attitude got in the way of the reality of it, and I stayed in it longer than I should have. Ah. And because my optimism was, oh, next month it's got to be better. Right. And it was not. Oh. But I, I saved myself, literally, by uh, doing economic uh, planning for what I wanted to do for the next 10 years, and I cut my staff from 36 to 7. Wow. So I could stay where I was. Right. And luckily, people wanted content, and they kept hiring me to do things, and that kept the business thriving. All right. And then we're to your big seven zero. Yeah. What advice do you have? Find the best person on the planet to Love be it. with every day. Cool. And I have found her. Make certain that your kids know that you love them and that you're going to take care of them no matter what. And have a fucking blast every day because you never know when the bus is coming down the road and, and you're going down the other road. <laughs> Jeffrey, that's uh, fantastic. Decades of advice. And uh, I can tell you this. Your ass better be here 
for 80. I will. Because I want to yeah, hear it. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for that. And, and uh, congratulations to finding that unbelievable person. Yep. We're going to be interviewing Jen in a New York Minute on our next podcast on oh, Grow cool. or Die. Uh, and y- your lessons, your mentorship to me has been great. And uh, I love you as a friend and a brother. Uh, this, if this episode boosted your attitude, please share with a friend. Join us on share social. Share with both your friends. As share with Sam both your friends. Sure. Yeah. You got at least two. Join us on social media. Go hit us on our Facebook page at the Attitude Movement, where we're trying to get a million people. And then also hit us on our Facebook page at the University of Attitude. Uh, for Jeffrey Gittimer, the king of sales, the king of attitude, this is Glenn Bill signing off on the Get Attitude Podcast. <laughs>